You know how sometimes you don't have a topic for that safety meeting that starts in like 10 minutes? We've all been there before. In fact, some of us are there on a weekly basis. Hi, I'm Rachel Walla, and in this video, we're gonna cover 10 quick and easy safety meeting topics that you can use for your next meeting. At the end of the video, I'm gonna give a discount code for our safety meeting topic handouts that are instantly downloadable too. So stay tuned if that's interesting to you. But with respect for your schedule, let's jump right into it. Safety meeting topic number one, personal protective equipment. This is so easy to put together last minute. So what you do is you go over what PPE is required, where it's required, and then go through each specific type of PPE and talk about what this is actually supposed to protect against. Because I've been on lots of job sites where people say, hey, we don't even know why we're wearing hard hats here, or why do I have to use this glove over this glove? Clarify those things for employees, remind them why they're using what they're using, and then after you're done with that, go through real quick how to care for their PPE and maintain it, and then also when to dispose of it. It's super easy, you can throw it together in like five minutes. Safety meeting topic number two, noise and hearing conservation. Now, according to the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, Occupational hearing loss is the number one most common occupational illness across the United States. For employers out there, the average hearing loss claim is coming in at around $7,000. So this is a critical one to be talking about with your employees. What it looks like in a safety meeting is just go over where hearing protection is required, what hearing protection is required, and how to properly use hearing protection. Safety meeting topic number three, slips, trips, and falls. Now this is one that everybody knows, everybody's heard a hundred times, but according to the CDC, 26% of non-fatal workplace injuries are slips, trips, and falls. <laughs> so clearly we're kind of missing something here. What I like to go over with employees are a few things that maybe they haven't thought about in a while. For instance, your shoes. Check out your shoes. If you're wearing worn safety shoes, often the treads aren't gonna be as good, you're gonna be more likely to slip. The positive thing is worn safety shoes are also worn in and you're used to the fit. So if you're wearing new safety shoes, you actually run a risk of not really knowing how these shoes are gonna fit. Often people may catch their toe on a stairway or something like that. So if you have new ones, give yourself a few days to break them in and be a little bit extra careful during those days. Also, remind people of the housekeeping hazardous areas around the workplace. It seems like every facility has this, like that one area that always is full of trip hazards and no matter how many times you try to clean it up, they reappear. So have somebody go and clean and do go through that so that they're ready. Safety meeting topic number four, office ergonomics. So this one actually surprised me, but did you know that 71% of office employees say that they go home with aches and pains because of their chair? Now, I would argue it may not be just because of their chair. Most chairs are pretty adequate. Oftentimes it's because people haven't adjusted the chair to fit them. So what you wanna do is remind people how to go through and adjust their chair from both the height, the lumbar support, the distance from the desk, how to move around the keyboard and the mouse, the monitors, everything like that so that you can be in a neutral, comfortable position throughout the day. Also remind people, if they're looking away from their monitor or back and forth between two monitors or a monitor and a book, that can put strain on their neck. So you wanna keep everything about at the same level to where you're not flexing too far from side to side. Cover just the basics of office ergonomics, some quick bullet points, and have everybody go back and readjust their workstation. This can save you a lot in claims like carpal tunnel, neck issues, aches and pains, all those types of things that actually lower production and make employees go home at the end of the day more tired than when they arrived. So that's a great one to cover. Safety meeting topic number five, fire extinguisher use. This one's an oldie, but a goodie. So first things first, go through and remind everybody of the different fire extinguisher types and what they're used for. That way people can check and make sure that they have the correct fire extinguisher for their work area. Next, talk about the pass method. Remember, it's pull the pin, aim the nozzle, squeeze the handle, and sweep from side to side at the base of the flames. Also, remind everybody, only fight fire if it's about at the incipient stage, which is around the size of an office trash can. Safety meeting topic number six, defensive driving. 
According to NIOSH, vehicle crashes are the number one cause of workplace fatality. It doesn't matter what industry you're in or where you work, those numbers haven't really shifted much over a long, long period of time. So it's a really good thing to remind your employees about defensive driving. Take a few minutes and cover just the rules of thumb that are super important when it comes to vehicle safety. And lastly, avoid distractions. Put the cell phone away, don't eat and drive. If you do have to eat, make sure that you stop, pull over, finish your lunch, and then keep going. Safety meeting topic number seven, emergency action planning. Now, when it comes to being prepared for emergencies, most people in the case of an emergency will revert to what they know. If they don't know what to do, that may be reverting to panic, and that is a bad day. So what you wanna do is go over your emergency action plan pretty regularly with employees. I would say like every other month or so. If there is an evacuation, who's gonna take the attendance sheet and keep track of everybody at the emergency assembly area? What are the types of numbers that you want people to use and how conservative do you want employees to be based on do we call and get emergency help right away or do we try to get in-house help first? These types of things seem small, but it's great to get people thinking through these scenarios so that when they happen, they are prepared. Safety meeting topic number eight, hazard identification. We in safety sometimes assume that people are really ready to identify hazards, but not everybody thinks like us. Oftentimes we'll get new employees or even experienced employees who come in who haven't really had to look at life that way before. So a good thing to go through is somewhat of a structured approach when you're talking about identifying hazards. Hazards is too broad of a category, so narrow it down. Start with different categories of hazards. Things like physical hazards, biological hazards, chemical hazards. Talk about each different category a little bit and get people thinking and talking and giving feedback on hazards they've identified. Safety meeting topic number nine, fall prevention. Now, slips, trips, and falls are one thing, fall prevention and protection is another. So what we wanna look at is falls from heights. Falls from heights are still a major issue in industry and still OSHA's number one most cited issue for construction. So what you wanna do is take a minute to talk about the difference between fall restraint and fall arrest and how you want people to adapt to either one. Also, a lot of times what I see when I review fall protection plans is employees haven't really thought through the whole setup of their harness, their lanyard, and their anchor point. And when we account for stretching factors, is that actually gonna be enough or is there still a chance that they could fall and hit the ground? Let's say you've got an employee wearing their full fall protection setup, doing everything right, they slip and they fall and they're hanging in their harness. Now, emergency experts say that you get about 15 minutes of time in that harness before the lack of circulation can result in serious nerve damage. So what we wanna do is we wanna have a fall rescue plan set up and ready to go. So that's something that's super, super simple but not often considered and it can be as easy as something like having a scissor lift staged so that if somebody does fall, another operator on the ground can come and retrieve the person who's in their harness and lanyard and make sure that they get back to level ground safely. Safety meeting topic number 10, workplace safety culture. This is one of my favorite ones because it's such a dynamic, interesting, moving target for most companies, but it's really good to get it out in the open and have people talk about it. So talk about things like how do we address safety as a group? Are employees adopting safety and are they pushing safety and are their managers pushing safety? Those types of things like how are new employees indoctrinated into the company safety culture? Are they reminded that safety is more important than production or is it the other way around? Talk about these types of things and talk about what good looks like and what bad looks like. Those are two things that employees, especially ones that haven't had a lot of safety training, will have trouble with at first. So if they really know how to identify it and what the company wants them to go towards and what we want them to stray away from, you can help people to see what good is and really move the needle when it comes to safety culture. All right, thanks for watching. Now, if you wanna get 50% off any of our safety meeting topic handouts, use code YouTube2020 at allysafety.com. Good luck on your safety meeting.